This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2013, The Most Important Contributor to Happiness According to Science, by Jay Harrington of lifeandwhim.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you every day, including holidays, from the best blogs or articles I can find. And without further ado, let's get right to our next article and continue optimizing your life. The Most Important Contributor to Happiness According to Science by Jay Harrington of lifeandwhim.com. In the summer of 2017, I spent months in a state of inaction, wrestling with myself about a problem I was facing. I had an idea for a book I wanted to write, but I was worried that a publisher wouldn't be interested in it. I wrote and rewrote book proposals, researched literary agents, and weighed pros and cons. I was worried that the book wouldn't be good enough. I feared being rejected by the traditional publishing industry. Around Labor Day, I had an epiphany and came to a resolution. Just write the book. After all, how was I to know whether the book was good enough until there was an actual book in existence to judge? Six months later, the book was published. But I didn't go the traditional publishing route. Shortly after I started to write the book, I decided to self-publish. With action, the right decision became clear. I wasn't going to put my dream into someone else's hands. I didn't want to relinquish creative control to a gatekeeper. I decided to succeed or fail on my own terms. By assuming control, the weight of the anxiety I was feeling lifted. The inertia of inaction eased and was replaced by the joy of autonomy. The happiness of freedom. Ours is a happiness-obsessed culture. By and large, this is a good thing. We should optimize for happiness. Problems arise, however, when we fail to understand from where true happiness derives. For example, before making the decision to self-publish my book, I was unhappy because I was focused solely on the end result, a traditionally published book. I thought that having a publisher's seal of approval would give the book, and me by extension, the imprimatur of higher status. Therefore, unless and until I had a book deal, I was outsourcing my happiness by placing control of the outcome in someone else's hands. This led to inaction, because as long as I didn't actually write the book, there was nothing in existence for someone else to evaluate and reject. I could cling to the idea that I had a good book inside me and daydream about the happiness it would bring to me once completed, but never move forward. All this accomplished was to make me miserable. What I failed to understand was that true happiness doesn't flow from the results of taking action, but rather the taking of action itself. Indeed, according to a recent report by the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, the highest predictor of happiness is not money, good looks, or popularity. It's autonomy, which the report defines as, quote, the feeling that your life, its activities and habits, are self-chosen and self-endorsed, end quote. Researcher Angus Campbell explained that, quote, having a strong sense of controlling one's life is a more dependable predictor of positive feelings of well-being than any of the objective conditions of life we have considered, end quote. A University of Michigan nationwide survey of adults backs up these findings. It found that 15% of Americans who claimed that they felt in control of their lives reported having extraordinarily positive feelings of happiness. When I was unhappily weighing the pros and cons of how to move forward on my book, I was waiting around to get picked. It was only after choosing to pick myself that I summoned the motivation to move forward. And during the process, my frustration evolved into happiness and contentment. I focused on the actions within my control, specifically getting my butt out of bed early in the morning and writing the book, rather than outcomes that someone else could determine. Don't wait to get picked. Too many people export their happiness to the whims of external forces rather than empowering themselves by being independent actors. They chase approval instead of autonomy. This takes many forms from obsessing over social media likes to worrying about being accepted into the right social circles. In a business or professional setting, it may involve worrying about things like awards, accolades, and titles. Focusing on these types of outcomes is a recipe for unhappiness precisely because they're out of our control. People who wait to get picked exhibit what is called an external locus of control. People who pick themselves exhibit an internal locus of control. 
Someone with an internal locus views themselves as the master of their domain who makes things happen, while someone with an external locus believes that things happen to them. Start taking small actions. Like most things in life that matter, living an autonomous life starts with small, consistent forward movement. As Oxford University psychologist Michael Argyle explained, quote, for unhappy people, their time is unfilled, open, and uncommitted. They postpone things and are inefficient. For happy people, time is filled and planned. They are punctual and efficient, end quote. When your life feels out of control, the challenges you face often feel insurmountable. You need to seize back control, but change won't happen all at once. It only happens slowly and sequentially. By taking action, momentum will build. You'll feel empowered. You'll start to feel autonomous. You'll seize more control. And the virtuous cycle of autonomy will set in. You'll be more purposeful and intentional with your time. The feelings of listlessness and helplessness over outside circumstances will subside. You'll procrastinate less and take action more. Most importantly, you'll be happier. You just listened to the post titled, The Most Important Contributor to Happiness According to Science by Jay Harrington of lifeandwhim.com. So my days have been pretty busy, especially recently. And one of the last things on my mind is taking a supplement. Though I know it's good for me to make sure I'm getting my vitamins and minerals, it's not an enjoyable experience that I look forward to daily. In the end, the only habits that last are the ones I enjoy. That's something we've talked about on this show before. And that's why Teonan created a range of instant beverages packed with the benefits of six functional mushrooms. These delicious drinks are made with potent fruiting body extracts and are not only a pleasure to consume, but provide a wide range of wellness benefits, including improvements to your immunity, gut health, energy, and mental clarity. There are seven different flavors to choose from, and all their drinks are USDA organic, vegan, GMO-free, gluten-free, and sugar-free. Visit their website at teonan.com, that's T-E-O-N-A-N.com, and use the code OLD to get 15% off your first purchase. That's teonan.com with code OLD to get 15% off your first purchase. And I have that linked in this episode's description. Thank you to Jay. This is not at all what I expected it was going to be, even after narrating over 2,000 articles for you, many about happiness. I thought it was gonna be all about relationships. Yesterday, I talked about my personal experience of tracking my income and expenses every day for over 10 years. And the other thing I tracked during much of that time that I didn't mention yesterday was what I did that day, really, really short description of events, and then also my mood. That way, after some time and enough data, I could go back and sort the spreadsheet by my best mood days and then see what those were. It was always those days spent with other people. So my conclusion at the time was that happiness for me was making sure I got enough of those days in spent with family and friends. Now, too much of a good thing is usually a bad thing. Plus, many of us would go crazy if we spent all our time with other people. So moderation is key, but you get the point. All that to say, this article was about something else entirely, control. And my brother talks about this on Optimal Health Daily that we often think many things are out of our control. And sometimes that actually is the case. For example, he has a chronic disease and the actual fact of having it is out of his control at this point. But what is in control is managing it. So we can take apart those things that feel out of control and make the best of those cases. And for everything else, well, there's so much in our control that we often don't even think about. So thank you to Jay for the reminder. Think about how you can take control of your own destiny today. And I'll see you in tomorrow's show where optimal life awaits.